Hello and welcome to the Lensec 177 and on the occasion of the first year in government of the coalition government today, we are fortunate that the Prime Minister, uh, Siti Beni Rambuka, is joining us to sit down and discuss the year that has been and the years that he's going to uh, govern on behalf of the people of this country. To start off, Mr. Rambuka, thank you very much for sitting down with me again and it's always good to talk to you. Been Let a me long just... time, Manish, eh? Been a long time. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. The last time we met, we were in Cook Islands. You were very selective on who you were going into. <laughs> yes. Let me begin by showing you this picture. That was the Sunday Times front page, a new start when you came into power. You look at this today, what does it mean to you? I think we are happier. <laughs> uh, we, my family is happy, so I'm hoping every family in Fiji is happier than uh, they were this time last year. We were not only looking towards the election. This time last year we had uh, come out of the election and we were six days into the counting period. Uh, polling being uh, held on the 14th of, uh, of December and we waited until the uh, 24th uh, for a government to be formed on the floor of parliament. So uh, as far as my family is concerned we are very happy. Uh, they've gone one class, no, no, they were going into those classes at that time last year, and the next class this year. One uh, told me he had graduated, that's a great grandson, Dallas, he's from Ono. He, uh, he said, uh, Papa, I'm graduating. Oh, uh, where are you going? I'm going to kindergarten. <laughs> so he got from preschool to kindergarten, and that for him is graduation. It is a graduation. Mm -hmm. In terms of achievements uh, overall, how would you describe your government's achievement in the past year? Uh, I am happy with what we have achieved because uh, coalition governments are never easy. It, the coalition government of 1992 to 1999 was totally different from this. It was, uh, those were two allied parties, the uh, two coalition parties of the SBT GBP government of 1992 to 1999 were both part of a bigger party, the Alliance government, uh, the Alliance party. And when the new constitution of 1990 came, where we were driven into uh, ethnic-based elections and uh, representation, we had to go to our ethnic groupings. So, but coming together again after the election was, was quite simple. This time, we can have uh, three uh, multi-ethnic parties, uh, three in coalition, one in opposition. So getting the three who have managed to develop and agree to a coalition agreement to govern is not easy because there will be well, first of all, there are teething problems, which we resolve with the agreement, and then the uh, initial steps that you take, you know, like baby steps, uh, you, uh, you stagger, and sometimes you fall, get up again, and walk again. And uh, we have had that experience uh, in the early parts of the year, uh, and I'm not saying that we have, uh, we have seen all of them, they can still come up again. Mm. But as uh, the great Cassius Clay of Muhammad Ali said, uh, winning is not about not being knocked down. It's, not, it's about not getting up after you're knocked down. So you don't become a champion by, uh, or you don't get stopped from being a champion by being knocked down. Mm -hmm. You still get chopped, uh, stopped if you get down or you're knocked down and you don't get up. Mm -hmm. And we have had a few knockdowns this year. Okay. So on that note, uh, did any of your cabinet ministers uh, frustrate you? You had to make a call and say, pull up your socks? Yes. Uh, no use lying. Uh, we have had uh, uh, some who have not uh, found it easy to carry out my directions as, uh, as the Prime Minister, in which case I brought it up to their and I don't just uh, tell, look, do what I say. 
I make sure that what I say is uh, supported by the law. Mm. And if they're doing something that's not supportable or supported by the law, then they have to change. They have to mm. change their view and uh, accommodate what is in accordance with the law. So how many punches have you thrown in the past year at how many ministers? I've uh, pulled back a few and I've thrown uh, none. And have they been put on notice that things will be Well, different? they saw that one, you know, ready to be thrown, and they said, better not let him throw, let, let's correct this. Hmm. Okay. In the past year, uh, what has frustrated you the most in terms of seeing how the government machinery works around you? They've not been frustrating. Uh, they have been, uh, if you are idealistic in your aim, in your objectives, then you can get frustrated. If you're realistic about your aims and you know that they are, some of them can be achieved, some of them will be achieved with difficulty, and some you will have to keep fighting at. Uh, only then can you, can you uh, slog through the year with your acceptable stops, your acceptable downs and knockdowns, and also your very, very successful, uh, pleasant achievements as you go through. Mm. Was your judgment uh, tested on any occasion to the highest level? Was my judgment? Tested. Uh, on, on, on no, my judgment has always been very easy because uh, I just judge in accordance with what I am allowed, and what I'm not allowed to do, and what the law allows. Eh? Mm -hmm. So what I, the difficulty is uh, for the others in cabinet to see where I'm coming from. And uh, most of them, in fact all, that have had some uh, slight uh, hesitant starts uh, have been put at ease by them convinc convincing themselves that I'm not just bull trying to bulldoze mm. my view against theirs. It is that I'm coming from a, posi a posi position of uh, the defender of the whole coalition. I have to defend the coalition mm. from those that may uh, may criticize us for not doing things right. And that is the, the most common thing that you read about in, uh, in uh, print, you hear about in, uh, in radio uh, announcements, and you also read about in uh, social media, mm. when the government is not doing what is right in accordance with the law. Mm. So I have to make sure that we do things right. Mm. The purported uh, cabinet reshuffle that was announced uh, and, and, and you took the blame for it, was that a judgment call that went wrong or are you still saying that uh, it was the right call? And no, I, I do not think it was wrong. Uh, but when I was asked to reconsider, uh, from the lawyer's point of view, uh, at the moment we are stopping at agreeing with what the law society had voiced. We could go a step further to find out from the courts whether what the, the, uh, the law society had mentioned is final. Uh, and in which case I will say, well, I made the wrong decision based on the wrong advice. Uh, I made the decision and I, I was advised that it was okay. So, so I and my advisor in that instant was wrong. Mm -hmm. The other one was uh, an intra-party, intra-coalition partner uh, reshuffle among themselves as uh, cabinet ministers, which uh, they also were not very keen to carry out. One of them is still not totally resolved, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I have to go back to the uh, uh, legal advisors, the Solicitor General's office, uh, to review the position, the advice they gave me, and also the counter advice that came from the, uh, the ministry. Uh, when that is all done, then I will have to just go back to the minister and say, look, what I said was right, you were wrong, you have to change. Which, which position is this, uh, Prime Sorry? Minister? Which position is this? Uh, it was about the, uh, the board of the Fiji National University. Oh. All right. Uh, 
cabinet decisions this year. Uh, you're very, you're very transparent about cabinet decisions are inside the cabinet office uh, at cabinet meetings. Are all decisions being taken as one, or have there been votes taken on issues? No, never. We never vote. It's a consensus, and uh, there's not never a vote in in uh, cabinet. It's always by consensus, and uh, people come around and discuss and discuss until you'll say, all right, we'll go with that. Mm. If I were to ask you to rate your cabinet minister's performance, can you give me first, second, and third? Uh, then I would not be a loyal leader. I believe that they have all played their roles as team members, and uh, I do not want to have them uh, doing their uh, one-upmanship trick on uh, me in the next year so that they get a better grading next year. At the moment, we as a team are working very well together. And we're only as strong as the weakest link. Do you see amongst the ranks and file of the current cabinet, uh, there are ministers who are vying for leadership role, uh, prime minister's role? If no one is, then we have a very weak cabinet. And are you, are you, promoting, are you promoting someone to... I'm not promoting anyone. Yeah. It's open. It's an uh, open contest, and, uh, and I have no decision. I have no say in who is to replace me or uh, in, the, in the party. Mm -hmm. uh, that will have to be done in accordance with the party constitution. Mm -hmm. Does anybody have to prove to you that they are capable of holding this position, or it's their decision? No, they, they do not have to prove. They just have to prove that they are performing. Mm -hmm. When I give them... Uh, the, the allocation of the tax and the ministry at the beginning of our, our run as a government, I expected them to do whatever the act requires of them in accordance, uh, uh, according to what they are required to perform in those ministries. If I were to ask you to choose a prime minister to replace you tomorrow, who would that person be from the current cabinet? That will be decided, as I said, that will be decided by the party, yeah? by the the People's Alliance Party. Okay, put politics aside. As a person, who do you see as the best capable person? Uh, at the moment, I've worked uh, well with two deputy party leaders, that's uh, Manwa and uh, Honorable Kamehameha and Honorable Linda. And uh, the way they interact with each other at the moment is Manwa. Manwa. Is Fiji ready for uh, Indo Fijian, uh, Indian of Fijian of Indian descent, Prime Minister. I have uh, one in my party that's uh, the Honourable Charanjit uh, Singh, and uh, as far as he's concerned, he just wants to play his role as a, a successful cabinet minister, and he has no leadership ambition at all. So, from my party, uh, that's the only uh, cabinet-ranked uh, party member I have. Outside of the cabinet, outside of your party, uh, is there anyone else in your coalition government who is uh, capable of PM leadership uh, down the line? It's very you. You're talking about Indo Fijians. Eh? Yes. It's very difficult to to do that because most of the Indo Fijians outside politics are very successful in what they're doing. And they're not interested in politics. Mm. They're satisfied with what they're doing. They they are managing directors of their companies or board chairman of their, their boards. So they're running governments, those governments themselves. Mm -hmm. They're running the government of Vinod Patel or the governance of uh, uh, Challenge Group or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they're not interested in governing Fiji. Mm -hmm. Will DPM Prasad make a good prime minister if he gets a shot? It'll depend on the party, uh, whether they can uh, and it will have to be decided by the coalition. Mm. Uh, with five members in a coalition of 26, uh, of 29 at the moment, 26 between the two parties, uh, will have to be decided by the members themselves. Mm. The first year has mostly gone by. Will you consider a cabinet reshuffle uh, in the second year of coming? Reshuffles are always open and uh, no timing, no real timing for it. And uh, we've had a good year. We've uh, looked at what, how we have done. We have had those uh, minor hiccups mm. and where I have had to speak to uh, a few of them. And uh, if I have to do another 
uh, reassessment of their performance of their duties mm -hmm. at this time after 12 months, uh, then we will have to consider the effect on our moving forward together. Mm -hmm. The term is four years. Uh, no point waiting until the end of two years to make the change. Uh, the, the good best time to have the change is after the first year and before the beginning of the third year. So this second year will be a very good time for us to have a reshuffle, uh, not only for better efficiency, but also in preparation for a stronger cabinet coming in mm. after the next election. Uh, you have a number of portfolios on your plate, information, public enterprise, civil service, uh, foreign affairs, climate change. Uh, 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 can you say that you have managed these roles uh, to the best of your ability? To the best of my ability, yes. Uh, to do a little better for the nation may not. Uh, I may have not been able to do that uh, because of my uh, the time allocation for each of the, and they're all very important uh, ministries. So uh, we have a, a choice of uh, uh, dedicated ministers looking after each of those areas of my portfolio and having a much bigger cabinet uh, whether the country can afford a much bigger cabinet than we now have like having a three more or four more cabinet ministers to take over the various uh, sections of the portfolio under the Prime Minister's office now uh, is the question I will have to ask. So are you looking in that direction? Well. It could be in that direction or reallocating some of the portfolios to the ministers that are already in cabinet. So, uh, you intend to do that and when? I, I'm already doing it. I'm already considering those. And whether I do it or not will depend on, on the timing that I feel is right for the uh, redistribution of the portfolios uh, and the change. You spoke about bad advice you received in a, in a matter that uh, you had to rescind on. Uh, Currently, are you surrounded with the best advisors who are giving you the good advice you need? The advice then was from within cabinet, and uh, and also uh, when uh, I was uh, asked whether it was proper advice from the uh, law society, I had to ask for the legal advice available in uh, in government, and that is the Solicitor General's office. Mm -hmm. And when they agreed with the advice from the Law Society, I back down. Mm. Looking at uh, the year that has gone past, uh, uh, is there an achievement that is very close to your heart, uh, a government achievement that is close to your heart that you wanted it done and it has been done? Uh, no. I think any achievement is uh, close to the heart of the leader. and. Uh, we do not want to say this is a big victory, this is a small victory. We like to, uh, I'd like to say that every little uh, battle one will go towards the whole victory in the war. If I had to ask you what are the three most uh, biggest problems uh, the country is facing currently, what would those three be? Uh, we're still burdened with the big uh, uh, national debt. Uh, and also the those things that are outside our control, that is the inflation rate that we face uh, with the various uh, factors that affect the cost of landed goods in Fiji. I'm talking about war in Europe, instability in the Middle East, the uh, talks about whether or whether or not to uh, reduce our fossil fuel imports. Uh, those are the things that uh, that uh, that destabilize the prices which are borne by our consumers at home. Mm. And we also have the uh, capital outlay uh, that is affected by the, the uh, percentage of our national income that we divert towards debt repayment and also keeping the government machinery going in our uh, recurrent budget, the cost of governance. We want to do all, but we can't do those two well if a lot of your income is directed, directed towards yeah. debt servicing. Uh, the Minister for Home Affairs has spoken in Parliament about tackling the drug issue currently plaguing the country. Uh, 
looking at your grandkids, the children currently, and the future uh, impact drugs may have on the younger generation. As Prime Minister, does it bother you that we are not doing enough to tackle drugs? What is enough? Harsher penalties? Harsher penalties, yes. I think we can do that. And uh, there is uh, room for harsher penalties, but they are not being uh, uh, dished out by the courts. And uh, that's why we have uh, uh, people reoffending, redivisit, re re what do we call the that long word? Redivism. What? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that word. That means you reoffend, reoffend, reoffend. Uh, recidivism. Yeah. Yes. When you have that, it means that you're not, your punishments are not having the deterrent effect they should be having. You are it punitive and also deterrent. Uh, and uh, punitive is not really the answer. You are supposed to, first of all, uh, make sure they do not reoffend. So your first aim by dishing out penalties is to deter them from reoffending. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have to go to punishment, punitive, the punitive aspects of uh, judgments, and uh, uh, you're doing it, you're going about it the wrong way, yeah? Mm. And maybe some of those just can't help themselves. They are so deeply into addiction that they, it doesn't matter. They don't know the difference. Mm. You know, the, uh, the problem is uh, not only the, the local users, mm. it's those that make the trade pay. And it's mostly those that are the ones that are not finding themselves fronting up to a Fiji courts. Mm. They take away the produ product and, uh, and uh, sell it internationally. Mm. For Fiji, no users, no pushers, no producers. Mm. Has the time come to arm the police? Uh, what's your thought on that? I do not think we should be arming our police. We uh, think that uh, uh, we have a, an unarmed policing uh, force, and uh, we should continue to do that. Mm. Mr. Ramuka, we'll take when, a... Only uh, when, we, when we have proof that we have a credible armed threat to law and order, that we have to arm our, mm. our police enforcement. Okay. Mr. Ramuka, we'll take a short break and continue the discussion on the other okay. side. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back, and uh, today we are sitting down with the Prime Minister, Siti uh, Uh Last segment, uh, uh, let's talk a bit of politics uh, and what politics means to you. Uh, what could cause you to fall as a Prime Minister? Uh, not enough votes. Okay, fair enough, not enough votes, but, but, <laughs> but from whom? Uh, at the moment, uh, in Parliament, we could have uh, some additional group from within the party. It could be one of the coalition partners uh, deciding to en masse uh, secede from the coalition, uh, in which case I go. Mm. And, uh, and it will depend on uh, whether they will be able to form a, a coalition uh, with the opposition very quickly. Otherwise, I can recommend uh, fresh elections. Mm. So, the minute you hear a vote of no confidence, you can always go up to government house and meet the president? Not necessarily. There is a time, I uh, think that's stipulated in the constitution. If we're into that time, if I, if, no, if the speaker says that they, he has received a vote no confidence, we let it be voted. And if it's uh, successful, I am free to advise uh, His Excellency that uh, I do not have the confidence of the House, and I recommend so-and-so uh, to take over from me, or I recommend that we call elections. So what will you recommend? If depending on what time, and depending on uh, 
how whether the, the country can afford another one? Will you want to see uh, in your to in your seat if a vote of no confidence successes? Will I want to see what? In your to take your seat. Uh, well, he can get some of my current supporters to vote with him. Mm. Why not? They can move that. And you will move out happily? Not happily. I will fight my way out, but I'll have to accept it. Yeah. Uh, describe fight. Uh, fight in the sense that I have to uh, convince the, the members of parliament before the vote that uh, uh, better the devil you know than the devil you don't. Mm. In regards to the president, he's, uh, he's finishing his first third year term, uh, uh, I believe very soon. Will your government give him another second year term or a new president is being looked we at? We have no reason to, uh, to say he should go out immediately at the end of that. He is entitled to another term. And uh, if he has, uh, according to our uh, assessment, done a, a good job as a head of state, why should he be removed? So the question remains, will he be given a second term by your government? My government will give him a second term. Okay. There are a couple of pictures of you and uh, His Excellency the President having a good laugh at Government House on numerous occasions. One wonders what the joke was about. Uh, we, uh, we, have, uh, our, we are cousins. And uh, my, uh, my mother's family comes from the... Uh, Sauturanga family of uh, Namara in uh, Nanduri. Mm -hmm. And they're the king makers for the Tumadwata. Mm -hmm. So that's why we joke. Okay. I see that laugh that uh, <laughs> we will just talk about. Okay. Talk about People's Alliance Party. Uh, you've spoken briefly about uh, rifts in parties. Uh, is there a rift in the party currently which you're dealing with or is all going? Uh, from within the uh, People's Alliance your, your Party? Yeah. Uh, I do not see the rift. People make something out of uh, things they see and they call it a rift. When uh, a certain minister may not totally agree with what I'm doing or may not be at uh, an important function I am at, some people think, oh, he doesn't like uh, being seen with you. Mm. Or he or she doesn't want to be seen, be seen, seen with, uh, be seen with you. So they take that as a, as a rift. Uh, at my age and with my experience, I'm not really looking at uh, uh, putting down any mutiny or anything within the camp. I'm just, I just want to make sure that if it's uh, uh, a push for leadership, that the new leadership will push for Fiji. Mm. Whatever happens, Fiji must come first. Mm. That goes with the coalition. Uh, you, you talk to DPM Prasad and DPM Gavoka in regards to major decisions you are about to take. Is that necessary for the Prime Minister to Oh, do? yes, yes. Uh, the last time we announced the uh, intention to have uh, the, uh, the reshuffle, uh, I did not consult with them. After that, they came up and we made sure that if any if any decision is made on uh, changes to cabinet that we would i would consult with them uh, will the coalition hold strong for the next three years for the next three years yes and uh, what do you base that on i am just basing that on uh, consolidating the support we now have our uh, understanding of each other we've seen each other's faults or what we see as we previously saw as other people saw a fault and we begin to understand and we find that they're not uh, <clears throat> they're not as constant as the northern star they uh, they can change mm. uh, linda tambuya minister for women uh, relegated to the bank benches in parliament did she take that decision of yours in the spirit of the party uh, no, I don't think she uh, she accepted very readily, uh, but uh, she understood that it is all teamwork. She had one term as a leader of government business, mm. and this, well, <laughs> if it was done to me and I was in that role, I would have well welcomed it, mm. because it gives you more time to concentrate on your ministry, mm. rather than on your other parliamentary duties. They say health is wealth. Uh, do you possess the right uh, healthy state of mind? 
to lead the country? I don't know. I have not been to uh, any uh, psychiatrist to uh, make a, a proper assessment of my ability or inability. Uh, so I do not know. Don't Those who watch me will know better yeah. whether I'm uh, losing it or I still have it. Still have got the dance moves uh, going. Uh, I saw in Cook Islands recently. I got, I got my, I got my problems with my artificial knees. I got. Uh, with uh, Johnson and Johnson knees that supposed to last 15 years. I had them replaced in 2006 and they should have been replaced a few years ago. So I still have them. I think they're becoming rusty. Mm -hmm. Will you lead the People's Alliance Party into the 2026? That depends on the party. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, term for my term as, a, as party leader is coming up for review. It can be changed in accordance with the Constitution. And uh, it, after it's changed, I can remain as Prime Minister or I can uh, be asked to step down and give the, the new party leader a trial run and prepare him and he prepares the party to, for the next election. And when is this supposed to happen? Uh, after two years. After two years. After two years from last year. So you're still not sure whether uh, you'll be up for 2026? No, that depends on the party. Finally, sir, uh, your message to Fijians uh, going into the second year of governance uh, under your leadership? Uh, I believe we have shown every uh, thing that we have uh, tried to show in the first year. We tried to restore confidence in the, in the, in the country, uh, people to have confidence in the government of, the, of their country. We want the business uh, houses to be comfortable with the way things are run. Uh, and the people satisfied with the social, uh, the social pro problem uh, programs that we have in education and health uh, and in welfare. Uh, people are happy that uh, the uh, legal machinery is working well, and uh, also the uh, the management of uh, government finances is being done properly. Uh, if they have, if they have looked at those in the first 12 months and are happy. Continue with us in the next year and things will get better. Prime Minister, thank you very much for talking to us. No.